All right, welcome back. Uh, my name is Edward Miro. I'm going to introduce the next talk here, but before I do, I just have a couple of announcements. I just want to make sure everyone's participating in the raffle prizes that are up for grabs in each of the tracks. There's uh, one raffle prize each day. Uh, check the pin note in the channels and please uh, sign up for the raffle. Um, also, if you're interested in learning about lock picking, uh, there's a lock picking village and workshop going on. And and uh, yeah, just wanted to make sure that you're taking a look at all of the extracurricular stuff and uh, getting involved with the community. There's a lot of great, awesome resources available. I just want to thank the sponsors again, of course, our Diamond sponsors are Microsoft and MongoDB. Uh, Platinum sponsors, Verizon, Salesforce, uh, Amazon Information Security, and of course our gold sponsors, Remediant, Intel, and eLearn Security. And then personally, I just want to thank all of the organizers and the volunteers behind the scenes who are making this happen. You guys are all rock stars, and I am honored to be a, a co-conspirator in this uh, operation. So. Uh, this next talk is pre-recorded, and the speaker, uh, Michelle Quiroz, is going to be in the chat to answer questions throughout. And if you have any questions that don't get answered during the talk, feel free to post those in at the end, and we will make sure those get asked. So this next talk is called Into the Unknown, From a Stay-at-Home Parent to an InfoSec Career by Michelle Quiroz. She works for Insighty, and uh, yeah, check out this talk. Hi everybody, my name is Michelle. I live in Las Vegas and I work for an IT security company called Insidey. We do penetration testing, security consulting, and security research. Um, and this is kind of a story about how I transitioned, how I went from being a stay-at-home mom into an InfoSec career. Just a little side note that will hopefully make the talk make a little bit more sense. As you can see on my cover slide, I also worked for a very long time as a character performer. So I worked um, with a character visit company and I would go to parties and events dressed up as different characters, like Elsa, as you can see here. And that kind of inspired the title of my, um, my talk for, for one of her most recent songs that came out with Frozen 2. Um, so um, please excuse my nerdiness with that. Um, I do love Disney references. Um, so, uh, another side note is I'm very much a people person, so I'm not used to giving a talk like this, so please bear with me if I'm awkward. I will try my very best not to be awkward, but I can't make any promises because I can be awkward, so <laughs> I will do my best. But here we go. I thought the best place to start would give you, be to give you guys a little overview, a little uh, background and information, a little preface to the story. So you guys can kind of see um, where I came from and make things make a little bit more sense, hopefully. Um, I grew up in Virginia until I was 12, then moved to Texas. I grew up with three brothers um, with a dad who was an engineer, um, or at least I thought he was my father. I just recently found out that he's not actually my father, but yay, 23 me Christmas gifts. Um, but my real father is actually a teacher and he's really cool too. But Growing up with an engineer as a father, I learned to look at the world a little differently. I love to take things apart, understand how things work, and really challenge myself and push myself. I mean, it didn't, I mean, having three brothers as well challenged me a lot. Um, I was always chasing after them, trying to do what they did, um, wanting to climb the same trees and ride the same bikes. And they might have been riding away from me or climbing the same trees, but I think it was part of the game and I still did it. So, um, no, but really I had a great childhood in that sense that I was pushing myself constantly and I went to college and I wanted to be an engineer. Um, and about two years into college, I got married and got pregnant and I was 20. Um, I'm not sure I recommend that to anybody, but my daughter, changed my life, as I'm sure most parents know how that goes. Um, so I started to change my goal there. I started to invest in her and wanting to spend my life teaching her how to be a responsible human being, to be a contributing member of society. My goal from when she was a baby was for her to 
need me less and less every day and become a strong and independent, beautiful human being. And that started to work. I taught her to read, I taught her to write. And she was growing up, she started to learn to play cello. And then she got older and she didn't need me every day. And so I started to realize, you know, it's time for me to figure out what I'm gonna do with myself now. I could pick up where I left off, I could go back to school. And I had to figure out what I wanted to do. Um, I decided that going back to school wasn't for me. I'm not, I do think that there are definitely people who need degrees and that it can be amazing. And I love learning as you'll find out later on. But I do think that there's also things that you can't learn in school and that sometimes that experience and just getting out and doing what you want to do is great. Um, and I, I know in America that we put a lot of emphasis on training and degrees and certifications. And I'm not saying those are bad at all. I just, I just know that often people feel bad when they don't have these things. But I want to encourage you. If you don't have a degree, that's okay, especially in this community, and especially in InfoSec. You can train yourself, you can teach yourself, you can learn step by step. Um, and so I just want you to know that that's possible. Um, so as I was trying to figure out what I wanted to do with myself, what I wanted to do with my life, I started doing something I was passionate about. I started getting into working with a nonprofit that focuses on bearded dragons. I was on the board of this nonprofit when it started. I helped create it. I helped build and write the bylaws. And it was something I was passionate about helping these animals. These are pretty common pets and they are the coolest lizards. And if you don't agree, you can fight me. Um, but really, they, they're really amazing animals, but they have needs that other animals don't have, like UV lights and calcium supplements. And when they don't have them, they can get severely disformed and disfigured. And we see so many animals like this that need help and that need people to be educated and to understand what they're taking care of when they get these cute little baby lizard. Um, and so I got passionate about that. And one of the other board members owned an IT security company and he saw my passion. He saw these qualities that came out uh, while I was doing this and said, you know, I need someone to do business development and you can talk to people. And there aren't a lot of people in IT that can talk to people, which is kind of cliche. And there are a lot of people in IT that can talk to people, but um, it was something that he saw my passion and I was doing something I was passionate about. And so I started my career in InfoSec and I've kind of prepared some points here that I think that I hope you guys can take away um, something from this and what I hope can kind of um, help you along your way or encourage you in your InfoSec career path. Um, the first thing I ran into was experience. I didn't have experience in this. Um, I didn't have experience with computers very much at all. I mean, heck, I use the same password on every site and I don't think that qualifies me for any sort of InfoSec um, award, except for maybe the worst InfoSec personnel ever. Um, and so I needed to get experience, but as I went through this job and as I learned and I trained myself and my company trained me, I was able to find these areas that I didn't think applied before, these jobs that I had when my daughter was in school. Um, because I only wanted to work while she was at school and I was home when she was home. So I worked as a substitute teacher and I worked as a, um, as a instructor at a ceramic studio. And then of course I worked as these character visits and I would go to these parties and perform as kids. And there are so many skills that I had that I didn't even realize applied. Um, for example, when I do social engineering jobs, when I go on um, a tactical social engineering mission and I have these goals to accomplish and these roles to play, it's just like being a princess, except for the people believe you more and they're less skeptical. <laughs> I mean, the kids are great and they come up with some of the most amazing questions to ask you and they will be skeptical occasionally, but you have to answer quickly. You have to know exactly what you're going to say and you're going to have to be believable and you're going to have to believe it and they will believe it. And I think that was one of the best trainings I could have had for social engineering because kids are kind of tough sometimes. And 
Also, I haven't mentioned, I don't know if anybody here has tried to wrangle a party of kids um, and 15 kids in a room from ages four to eight um, and keep them entertained for an hour when they have a whole bunch of sugar in their systems from cake and, and candy. Um, that is also a skill that you can't just learn in school. So learning to manage people is something that you kind of got to get an experience. You just got to get on the job. Um, and so that's just how I could found ways that different things I did to be applied in my InfoSec career. And coming back to being passionate about something, um, that's something I think that you guys could take away from this is learning, finding something you're passionate about. If you're passionate about InfoSec, um, volunteer at little uh, um, different conferences like DEF CON or the, here at Diana Initiative. If you can do that, people will see your passion. That will bring out your best qualities. People will see the things that you're good at. And that will inspire companies to hire you. I know in Sidey, we'd much rather hire someone with the right mindset, the determination, the people who want to be a hacker, who have the right mindset, the determination, and creativity. And then we can train them to do a task. But you can't train someone to have the mindset. You can't train somebody to have the passion. They either have it or they don't. So that's why I just... If you can, get out there and do something that shows your passion and that will show the best qualities of you. Another problem I had when I started was I had no idea what I was doing. And I mentioned this before, I had the same password everywhere. I didn't know about computers or security. So my, um, the owner of the company sat me down and he got a big dry erase board. And he started with the OSI layers and it was a long four hours. I think I had a headache by the end of, and I still didn't understand anything at the end. And I still had no idea what I was doing, but I figured out enough so I could do business development. And I was excited and I started to learn. I started to change my habits. I learned how security can be easy in my life. And I continued to learn as I went. And that's what I think everybody here can do. You can learn as you go. You don't have to be the best. You don't have to know everything before you start. You know, just get started. Do find any job in InfoSec. You know, I started with business development and I pushed myself. I learned. I asked questions. You can ask questions to people and, and learn um, and hopefully be respectful of their time. I know I probably wasn't always, but I tried. Um, and you just need to do it. This is a picture of me after when DEF CON. I went and I bought a badge and I wanted to learn to solder. And so I went to my um, mentor and I said, hey, you know how to solder. I got this badge. Can you teach me how to solder? And he said, sure. And so I came to his really cool soldering station. He had a, um, everything I needed. And he goes, okay, here are the instructions. Here's the soldering station. Don't burn yourself and don't mess up my stuff. And I was just like, okay. So... I learned and I looked it up and I read the instructions and I think this is a, a dark net badge, but I, I learned and I showed him and he would make corrections. And then finally he kind of gave me an example once I kind of figured it out my way. But I really think that some of the best teachers are people who force you and push you to figure it out yourself. Um, and just learning as you go, don't feel like you need to know what to do ahead of time before you just start doing it. You need to just push yourself, do what you need to do and you will learn along the way. And that leads me to the next point is you should push yourself outside your comfort zone. I know it's so cliche to say, you know, when you're outside your comfort zone, that's where the magic happens. And that's where you find your true self. But I think there is some truth to the importance of pushing yourself outside your comfort zone, though, because that's what trains your brain to be able to handle situations that you're uncomfortable in. When you make yourself uncomfortable on purpose, you learn to adjust faster. You learn to figure yourself out and how to deal and cope with the stress and cope with not knowing and the fear of failing. And I think that's so important that I've purposely tried to push myself, put myself in situations where I'm not comfortable. This is a picture of me doing flying trapeze. And I was scared. I thought I would fall. I wouldn't be able to hold on. But it was so much fun and I was so happy that at the end of it. And so I started in my career pushing myself to do things that I was uncomfortable, signing up for talks like this one, um, 
because I knew that it was important. And as I go, I'm finding myself doing things that I never thought I could do. Things that I never would have before thought. And it happens little by little. Each time you make yourself uncomfortable, you grow and you make yourself into a stronger person. Um, so I just encourage you, find a job that makes you uncomfortable. Find a job that you're not always in your comfort zone, where you're learning, that you're having, you're forcing yourself to learn every day or else you'll be swallowed whole. And that is where you will grow the most. If you know what's happening in your job, I would, I would challenge you if you're watching this. If you feel comfortable in your job and you know what to do every day and it's boring, find a different job that challenges you. Push yourself. Find another job where you, you in the community if you want to stay at InfoSec, if that's what you're in, that makes you work hard, that you feel like you don't know what you're doing and you have to try harder every single day. And, you know, as I started doing this, as I was pushing myself, as I was learning, I started to have fun. Um, and I know I said before that I love learning and like having fun, but I was. And I started signing myself up for talks. Um, I started loving to getting passionate again, going back to that, finding something you're passionate about, passionate about teaching people about security, because this was something that changed my world personally. These were things that I always thought were so complex that I didn't understand or that didn't apply to me or that it would just make my life difficult. And that's not what security is. Security makes your life easier if it's done right. And I started doing talks around the valley because I really want people to understand what I can see now. I started to have this gift where I could take a technical idea and translate it, make this bridge across from the technical and the non-technical and teach people what I could understand in a way that they would understand it. So I started to do these talks around the valley. I would do lunch and learns and different talks about different ideas um, to help them to learn about security, to get passionate about security, to be more secure in general, and just to think a little differently and understand that security will help them. It's not just gonna hurt them and it applies to them. And so, I mean, if you're listening and you want a security talk in Las Vegas area or surrounding, let me know. I'm your person. I would love to do it. Um, I would come in. I would do a talk, um, teach people about security because it's something I'm passionate about. Um, and often I would sign up for these talks and I would just pick a subject that I was excited about. And I would have no idea what I was going to talk about. And I wouldn't even understand the subject. And then I would research it. And that's where I got to learning that by teaching other people, it would teach me. By forcing myself to find a subject that I didn't understand, I would force myself to learn that subject. My first talk was on passwords. And I already told you before <laughs> that I had the worst password policy before. I used the same password over and over and over again. Um, and that's what I researched first because it made such a huge difference in my life to be able to have a password manager and that security could be easier and that I wouldn't have to remember all these passwords and I could teach other people that. Um, and I know I said I could give talks for you guys earlier and you might change your mind now that you know that I kind of figure it out as I go, but I promise I'll be ready in time for the talk. Um, but it became something I love to do, to research things and to learn more. Um, and I since then have given this talk again. There were people there that were way more technical than me that I was so surprised that they would ask me um, some technical questions. And I realized that we often um, compare ourselves, our weaknesses with other people's strengths, or we put people on this pedestal, what we think that they know, and because they're good at one thing that they must be good at all things. And we compare ourselves to that. And it's so not fair that we should be realistic in that and, and find our strengths, find the things that we're good at and our, our qualities that make us special. And that we have that passion that shows our best qualities and focus on those things. Um, and as I've done this and as I've learned more and I've done this talk other times, um, I've added more to it. I've added sections for developers, for people to uh, focus on as they're developing these applications, as they're developing these systems to make the security built in. Don't rely on the user to be secure. You take the responsibility on yourself. And it was so fascinating to me to learn how to do that, how to make it secure so I could teach other people, even developers. And um, 
of course, there's still things I don't know, and I'm never afraid. And I think that's another thing to mention is you should never be afraid to tell somebody you don't know, but you can figure it out or you can find someone who does know and answer that question for them. So that leads me to my next point is to never give up. And I know in this field, there is so much to learn. I know there have been times where I felt like I, there was no possible way I would ever know what I want to know and I should just give up now. That I would go to talks and meetups where there would be so many things that I wouldn't understand, highly technical ideas, and I would just be so frustrated that people were there that understood and I didn't understand. And it wasn't fair. And so I would write down the things that I didn't understand and I would go look them up and I would research them later and try to figure out what they meant and put the pieces together little by little. And I started to realize over time that I have things that I'm good at that other people aren't. And if you have that right mindset, that determination to figure out things and to use your qualities and your strengths to your benefit, that you can take yourself to the next level, that you can do the job that you're meant to do and love doing it. I know that I'm not going to be a pen tester, not because I couldn't do it ever, but because it doesn't make sense for me and my passion and my qualities. Um, and so I focus on the things now that I can do, the research, the security, and adding to what other people need, the different mindset and the different way of thinking that adds value to my company, to my team, um, in other ways that other people wouldn't. So find your niche, find your sweet spot and your passion. Focus on that. And if you can, I think one other thing that I would want to add that would help is to find a mentor if you can. And when I say a mentor, I mean someone who pushes you, who challenges you. I know there's so many times when I was so frustrated with something that I knew I would message my mentor. I'd be like, hey, how do I do this? And I knew he knew. And he did. And he would just tell me, try harder. And those two words were so frustrating. Um, that would be like on the verge of tears. But I knew if he told me to try harder, just like with my climbing in the gym, that there was a way that that route could be climbed. That if other people could climb it, I could figure out a way to climb it. And when he told me to try harder, that I knew that I could do it and I just needed to try harder. So find someone who pushes you, find someone who encourages you and hope that they put up with you. Because I know there are many times where I've asked these questions that made this happen um, that would take hours and hours of explanation where I just wanted to understand how something worked and I really appreciate the time that he put in and explaining to me. And I hope you guys can find something like that too because I really think it helps. So. Thank you guys so much for listening. These are just a few tip points that I hope you guys can take away. I hope that I pulled out some universal truths that you guys can hopefully get inspired by or motivated by. Um, and just find something you're passionate about. Find something that pushes you. Find something that makes you uncomfortable. Find something that um, teaches you. And, and find, just do it. Just find, get started in that career. Find the career that you want. Find your niche, find the areas that you're good at and focus on those things. Um, and thank you so much for listening to my talk. If you guys have any questions, here's my contact information. I'll be around for questions um, and I'm more than happy to answer those. And thank you guys again so much.